Hi there, this is Anson Garcia with Verizon, and today I'm going to be talking to you about MRA, Mobile Remote Access, as part of our Verizon UCAS. And one particular thing I'm going to be talking about is troubles connecting up a phone. So this is not a comprehensive look at Verizon UCAS, MRA, or Cisco's Unified Communication, Mobile Remote Access. I'm specifically going to hone in on problems that people have, one particular problem, and it always comes up. I got a call last week. I get a call at least once every few months about this. So I thought I'd shoot a video and show you how to fix this problem. Again, we're talking about Verizon UCAS, mobile remote access, connecting a phone from over the internet to Verizon UCAS. So join me on the whiteboard. Let me tell you what I'm talking about, and then we'll get to the demo. Okay, let's say you have a Verizon PIP network, and that Verizon PIP network goes to our service, which is called Verizon UCAS. Okay, so that's normally how in your phones you have different sites connected to here, right? You know, site one, site two, maybe you have a headquarters site over here, and that's typically you know where your phones are going to sit inside the network over here okay so what if you're sitting out on the internet this is the wild wild west internet well our Verizon UCAS also has a secure connection to the internet and we call this mobile remote access and there's PKI infrastructure and things like that to control all this security and encryption, uh, things like that that are part of this. But that's beyond the scope of this. What I want you to get in your mind is what we want to do is something like this, right? Or you're a telecommuter or something like that. And here's your house and you have an internet connection through Comcast, Time Warner or Verizon or AT&T or what have you. And you want to get this phone. First, this phone has to be a particular model, right? It can be a DX, uh, 7800 phones, and 8800 phones, and there's more uh, out there. But typically, these are the ones that are connecting up through this way. So when I say MRA, or you hear that phrase MRA, that's connecting through this internet to Verizon UCAS, and you might hear the term expressways. Also, those are the devices or the virtual machines or the, the appliances that sit in the DMZ behind firewalls and things and take these encrypted connections in from phones and Jabber for that matter, but from phones, from the internet. So that's what we're talking about here. Not in the enterprise, but what happens sometimes is when you move from the enterprise... So you're in your PIP network, Verizon PIP network, and you're sitting out here and your phone's sitting out here. Or your IT personnel send you a phone or something like that, and maybe they configured it while they were on-prem, on the premises within the network, and they send you the phone, and now you're sitting at home. You get this phone and unbox it, and you're going to set it up here, and you're, remember, connected to the Internet um, this is what happens. So let's take a look at the demo and how we fix that. Okay, here is a phone trying to register. Now, go back to the whiteboard. We had the phone that was configured on-prem, or we had it on-prem, then we took it off-prem. Here, now it's at our house, and we plug it in, and we think it's going to work. Well, it's not going to work. It's trying to register. It has some things stored in it that make it believe that it's within the enterprise and when we're within the enterprise within the PIP network that's connected to, to UCAS or uh, on-prem Cisco call manager for that matter it's trying to connect a different way for you technical people out there it got fed a DHCP option 150 that's stored no amount of resetting or anything like that is going to help that right now there's certain types of resetting that will but your typical you know menu items to reset aren't going to help that so 
uh, again, this phone's trying to register it. It did register before. It was registered to UCAS before on-prem. Now, if we go into the admin settings and we take a look at um, reset settings, number four there, again, none of this stuff will work. I mean, if we reset the device or reset all settings, network saying it doesn't really work. What we're after is the number four number four that service mode that's what we're after here now once we go and choose service mode it's going to ask us this action clears the current service mode so that service mode kind of toggles a switch and let's just call it toggling for on-prem to off-prem right now it does a little bit more than that but that's the mode that's the thing that we need to get to. We need to kick it, pull some things out of memory, and say, hey, I want you to change your service mode. In other words, I want you to connect up to WebEx Teams, or I want you to connect up to on-prem, or I want you to connect up through MRA, through the Internet. So we're going to get some options after we reset the service mode. Now, we only have a limited amount of time to tell it that we really do want to change the service mode here it is it only gives you 10 sec it only gives you 10 seconds so if you look away you're going to miss it there it is so now we have the services mode changed it's coming up it it has it it uh, activates your camera and it says hey give me an activation code or a barcode and this is what webex teams would would send you but the other thing you can do is, if you read along the bottom there, you can also manually enter your activation code or services domain. We're, at, we're after the services domain. The service domain is, let's call it on-prem or MRA, um, Cisco Unified Communication Manager. And here is where we're going to either put our activation code for WebEx Teams or service domain if we were going to connect up to Verizon UCAS through MRA or Cisco Unified Communication Manager Manager through Expressway MRA. Now that I've put in my services domain, I can continue. And this services domain is going to kick off some DNS magic in along with our username and password. And is going to, for you technical guys, it's going to ask for service records from DNS for that particular service, for that particular domain. Those service records are going to come back. And then it's going to set up a TLS connection. That PKI infrastructure is going to kick in. And then our username and passwords are going to be used to log us in through that encrypted connection to Verizon UCAS, Expressway MRA, and register to the UCAS infrastructure, specifically the Cisco Unified Communication Manager, so we can have our phone operational over the internet. Username and password is now complete. We can go ahead and sign in. If you saw there, it did want to upgrade. It recognized that there's an upgrade uh, from the system that it's connecting to, and it's different than the firmware that's on the phone.
Okay, now it's setting up that TLS connection through the expressways via MRA to the communication manager and is registering. And here it goes. And it notices the firmware that's on the communication manager in, v in, in UCAS is different and it wants to upgrade. So we'll go ahead and delay that for now. There we go. We're completely registered and we can use our phone as a telecommuter over the internet connected to Verizon UCAS. I hope this has been informative and thank you for watching.